The secretary shall record accurately the minutes of all voters' meetings and council meetings. He shall see that these minutes are kept in a safe place. Minutes should follow the agenda and have the same general format for each meeting. The minutes should be kept brief. Record only actions, not options. All motions should be submitted in writing to prevent misunderstanding and the exact word recorded. If a motion is not seconded, it doesn't exist and is not recorded. The name of the person making the motion is recorded, but not the name of the person who seconds. Reports from departments or committees do not have to become part of the record, only the fact that they did report. The minutes are signed by the secretary. If meetings are more than two months apart, members tend to forget details. In this case, it is a good idea to select two or three reviewers before the meeting who will check the minutes within two weeks of the meetings. When the reviewers approve the minutes, then they sign them, and then the minutes become accepted. They are printed and distributed before the next meeting. They do not need to be read or approved at the next meeting. The secretary shall keep an accurate list of all voting members of the congregation and shall call their names at each meeting. He shall keep an attendance record of all voters and council meetings. He shall take care of all correspondence for the voters and the council. Sometimes there is a corresponding secretary appointed for this position. The secretary shall notify voters and council members of the date, time, and place of all meetings sufficiently before the meeting. He shall supply summaries of the minutes of the meetings to the church newsletter or to committees if they request those summaries. The treasurer, as mentioned in the last chapter, is usually the chairman of the finance committee. He shall keep accurate records of all money received and paid out by the congregation. He shall use good systems for keeping financial records and suggest ways to improve these systems. Today, that means to be able to use a computer program for accounting. If there is no financial secretary, he shall assume the duties of this position as outlined in the previous chapter. He shall give rough financial reports at all council meetings. And up-to-date reports of all voters' meetings. He shall pay all bills, salaries, and district or synod offerings as they become due. He shall be responsible for safe deposits and investments of all funds. He shall keep a permanent record for each fiscal year. His books and records shall be audited by an auditing committee, selected by the council or elected by voters as written in the bylaws. He shall be responsible for training his successor in how to run the job as treasurer.